Welcome in the last section of our course. In this section, we'll see how to prevent common attacks with Spring Security. We'll start from course and we'll see how to prevent it. Next, we'll be using CSRF and we'll see how to prevent it. We'll be using custom CSRF configuration strategy in our code and at the end, we'll perform testing of our application to assert that is secure. And this is a first video in which we'll be investigating and understanding course and how to prevent it. So we'll see what a course is, we'll see how to enable and disable it, and also we will see two ways of configuring it in Spring Security. So let's start from the endpoint. Let's say that we have a simple REST controller that is just returning hello and something. We have first mapping that is called greeting and second is greeting java config. It is not important right now what those endpoints do, but the case with course is done like this. We are exposing the backend at the specific port and sometimes frontend that could be on different server running for example in Node.js. Can work on different ports. So for example, we have set up when Node.js application is working at the port, as you can see here, 9000 and our base application can work on the 8080. When we have course enabled, we will not be able to execute that request. Every request to our endpoints should be from the exactly the same port. But in such configuration, we need to change that. So there is a first way to do it in Spring. So we can allow that cross origin request. So requests between two origins are allowed. So from the local host 90.0.0. It means that if our application is on this URL and this port, it can send a request to our backend, Spring backend, that is work on whatever port it was assigned. Second way to configure is, is using Java configuration. So let's look at this. We have an application and also we have web MVC configurer. We can use a registry that is a course registry and we can add mapping from greeting java config and we are specifying that it allows exactly the same origin but this will be global for it and it is using java config and on the other side it was using annotations so let's look at the test first test examines that it works properly with annotation setup of this test is very simple and we are starting our spring backend on the random port so it is not important for this test We are getting REST template and we are sending a GET request from origin localhost 9000. We can see that it is sent via the origin header. We are asserting that return status code should be OK and it origin should be equal to localhost 90. So let's start this test. We can see that our test passed. Second thing is to test exactly the same configuration setup but with different URL. We are testing right now greeting java config. So as you remember it was a property that was specified globally programmatically. And this time also we should be able to send requests from origin localhost 9000 and response should have header access control allowed origin with that specific origin. So let's start this test and see if our code works as expected. We can set our code works as expected, so we're able to send that request. But what is the course attack? Course attack is similar to the test, let's say, but this time we are not able to guess origin. Let's say that this request is executed from totally different website. For example, attacker website. If we will execute the following test, something will happen. Let's see. We can set our test failed, and that's a good thing we can see that could not extract response. So response was not returned to our client because we didn't use a proper header because that request was not sent from the proper website. So using that course configuration with explicit configuration with domains and ports, we are safe against that course attack. 